Thanks, Amy. It's just fun. It, that's the fun part. Uh, I know. I think you might need to adjust it. It might be a little fine, I'm not sure. Okay. So, now let's go ahead and rewrite sine and cosine in terms of x's, y's, and r's. So, we'll write sine theta. Call it out to me, class. Y over R, yep. Cosine is X over R. You said it, or at least I thought you said it. So we've got that quantity squared. And then we'll go ahead and expand those. We have Y squared over R squared plus X squared over R squared. I need to combine these two fractions, but look what we have here, common denominator. So a lucky day. Let's go ahead and just write it. And I'll, I don't like writing y squared plus x squared. I want to be alphabetically correct here. So I'll write x squared plus y squared all over r squared. Now, let's think about this. Side note here, what do x, y, and r represent? Doesn't the x represent the horizontal portion, y represent the vertical portion, and r represent the length of the line segment from the origin to the terminal side? What was the relationship between x, y, and r? Anybody remember? You look on your trig chart for the circular function definition, or you can look at this right triangle which I've drawn. What is the relationship between x, y, and r? Anna? Ironically, it's the answer to like probably about 90% of the questions I ask in this class. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mason? What is the relationship between X, <laughs> Y, and R? It's Monday, it's Y week, so I'm getting some softball here. What do you got, John? <laughs> Put it at the end of the alphabet, you're right. <laughs> Uh, X, X squared. Right. Oh. Except for the R, I guess. You were going to say it, weren't you? No. Oh, were you? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So X squared plus Y squared is R squared. There, good old Pythagorean here coming to the rescue for us here. So notice X squared plus Y squared does equal R squared. I'm running out of room down here, so I'm going to put this over here now. R squared over R squared. Oh, my gosh. That equals... I call this the Pythagorean identity. Oh, nice. Right? Oh. So, I see, says the blind man. There we go. Sine squared theta plus cosine squared theta equals one. That is the first of the three Pythagorean identities. So, are you going to have to do all these steps every time? No, you have to use this. Yeah, use that idea right there. Somebody earlier asked me, is there another form that we might see this? And the answer is yes. We can, it's not on your trig chart, so I'm going to write it down here and you can pencil it in on your trig chart. Alternate form might be if you isolate the sine squared. Now you all can probably do this in your head, but if you want to play it safe, you can write it like that. Sine squared is one minus cosine squared theta. Or you can isolate the cosine squared theta and write cosine squared theta equals one minus sine squared theta. These are uh, different sides of the same coin. That'd be like a three-sided coin. So yeah. I'll leave that there for your reference. And I want you five over here, over there, to take this formula, one plus tangent squared theta, and do what you can to that, and see if you can get that to equal the Pythagorean identity there, secant squared.
squared theta. Alright? So, Stephanie goes to make John, Jeremy, and then everyone else over here. I want you to see if you can take this 1 plus cotangent squared theta and do some one of the similar stuff that we saw over there and simplify that down to cosecant squared theta. I'll give you about three minutes. I'll be walking around. Give you some <coughs> not so subtle hints. by doing some some of the similar expansion some of the similar you know maybe turn it into something like this and turn it into something like x y's and r's there you go keep going now maybe expand that so far so good now here's what we can do. Well, because Work it from the other end as well. Okay? That's, um, start start working your way back up. So it's R squared. R squared. Secret R squared theta. Yeah. Maybe write that as secant of theta squared. And then see if you can meet in the middle. I have met the middle? You're, you're close. You're really good. Now we're just going to figure out how to make this equal that. Can you add those two things together? Add the this and this? No. The one and the, the x one. squared. Can you add those two together? No. Why not? <laughs> no. Because I'm not smart enough. Okay. Uh, there, but there's another reason why you cannot quickly combine them into one thing. You got two things over here. Can we make that from? Okay, yes. Can you find a common denominator? Ding, ding, ding. Try that. Oh, Try oh, the y squared. So, so it's a breakthrough. Wait, so turn it into one. What do y'all have here? Um. You wrote, you have one plus cotangent. Yeah. Yeah, turn one into Now what's it? Uh, uh, no, no. No, okay. Let's, let's follow the same process here. Let's turn that cotangent squared into like a parenthesis cotangent squared. And then turn it into X, Y's, and R's, just like we did that. And I recommend also kind of work your way this way as well. So the best final turn this cosecant squared theta into cosecant theta squared. Then turn that into X, Y's, and R's. Because, look, our x squared is 
turn this one into something that has a common denominator? Y squared over Y squared, I agree. Plus X squared over Y squared. So then what you can see here, I'm going to erase this one like that. So this would be X squared plus Y squared over Y squared. And x squared plus y squared, as we know, is? R squared. R squared over y squared. So that is, oh. is equal to? Oh, cosecant squared theta. Damn. So 1 plus cotangent is equal to cosecant squared theta. Those of you over there along the wall, you turn 1 plus tangent squared theta into what? So y'all pay attention here to what they did. I think it's y over x. Y squared over x. How did you how did you combine these things? You find the common denominator. Which is x squared. So you turn your one into the opposite. X squared over x squared. You still got x squared plus y squared over x squared. And x squared plus y squared is? So you have r squared over x squared, which is equal to secant squared. Very similar um, process here. This one we feel like a game. All right, well, you're welcome. You should. If you can find it. So there you go. 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared, and 1 plus cotangent squared is cosecant squared. That's nice. <laughs> That's nice. They're all, these are the Pythagorean identities because the key point there is that x squared plus y squared equals r squared. We saw that on both of these. Uh, there is a slight variation. Occasionally you'll see that. Uh, if you want to write it on your paper, you can. Sometimes we isolate that tangent squared and just say tangent squared equals secant squared theta minus 1. Sometimes we'll isolate the cotangent squared equals cosecant squared theta minus 1. So like I said, if you want to write that on your paper, feel free to. Boom, there's two of the identities groups taken care of. Let's deal with the next one. All right, uh, do you all remember when we were dealing with sines and cosines, I talked about odd and even, how some, some, are odd, some of those functions are odd and some of those are even, okay? Uh, so we were, if you recall, sine of x, or I should say sine of theta, okay. I guess sine of x, I'll call sine of x. Sine of x is, I think it was odd, right? It meant that it wasn't reflected across the, the y-axis, it was like reflected kind of like that. Where if you had 
cosine of negative x to something over here in the negative territory would be equal to negative the sine of positive x. So if I, for instance, if I was looking at negative pi over 2, then I would just say, well, that's the opposite of sine of pi over 2. And cosine was even. Which meant that if we had the cosine of negative x, cosine of negative pi over 2, or cosine of like negative 0.1, it's the same thing as the cosine of 0.1. So cosine of negative x is the cosine. So example, cosine of negative 30 is the same thing as the cosine of positive 30, stuff like that. Anybody remember that kind of sort of? Well, we had homework over it, or we at least discussed it. So there's not going to be any more homework dealing with the graphs, but that just means the graphs are going to be used in understanding some things. So that's like the graphs are now prior knowledge. All right? So here we go. Let's go ahead and very quickly sketch a sine graph. And today is going to be a great day. Because today you're finally going to say, aha, I get it. I see it now. Do you all remember when we first started talking about sines and cosines? And you saw the graph of sine, and then you saw the graph of cosine. What did you say? Well, after you saw the graph of sine, then you saw the graph of cosine. Yeah, they're like they're screwed over. Do you remember? They said, oh, those kind of look the same. And I said, yes, they're actually uh, phase shifted. You'll learn about phase shift later. But yeah, but now it's been later, and we know about phase shifts. Okay? So let's think about the sine of x and the cosine of x. Always cosine. There we go. What would it take to go from sine to cosine? She said shift it over, I agree. I kind of like we take this peak right here and put it there on the y-axis. We take this x-intercept and we put it right there at the half point. We take this trough and put it there, right? So we definitely see a lot of those. So let's just go ahead and we could say uh, sine of some shifted thing equals cosine. Now which way are we shifting, left or right? To the left. So is that going to be a plus or a minus here? It's a plus because it's opposite of what you would think. You remember that whole stuff. Next question is, how much is it shifted? Well, let's see. That's two pi. So that's pi right there. And this one right here is pi over two. So this could. Yeah, so shift over pi over 2. So sine of x plus pi over 2 equals cosine. Sine and cosine 90 degrees out of phase. Or pi over 2 out of phase. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little bit of manipulation here so that everything looks like what you've got in your formula chart. Okay? So here we go. For no apparent reason, I'm just going to plug in negative x into both of these. just because that looks something like fun to do. If it works for positive angles, it's gonna work for negative angles, okay? No big deal. But, on this right hand side, going from here to here, I'm going to apply 
the even property of cosine. Where we have cosine of negative x is equivalent to cosine of x. And over here on this side, I'm just going to rearrange this so that it looks the way that I want it to here. Instead of writing sine of negative x plus pi over 2, I'm just going to write sine of pi over 2 minus x. Just rearranging those, keeping the symbols in front. No big deal. All right, and that's it. That's the co-function identity. Look at your trig chart. See if you can find that sucker. Sine of pi over 2 minus x equals cosine x. Nick, were you able to find it there? On your trick chart? Oh. So you kind of know where we're going. Now you might say, why in the world are they writing this sine of pi over 2 minus x? It seems kind of like a weird way. Personally, I like it the way that it is up here because it very clearly shows the shift. You know what I mean? But there is a reason why we write it like this. I'm going to show you why that is now. Well, I guess I'll draw one more picture for you. All right, so we'll do one more co-function identity here. So uh, on this graph, I'm going to draw y equals negative cosine x. We all remember that negative cosine starts low, goes high, and then ends up there at the base, uh, ends up low again. And I want to figure out What's it going to take to go from negative cosine over here to sine? Now look at the peak here. So this peak needs to go over there. This is not very properly drawn here. Let's see if I can show you better. So here's pi. Uh, now here at pi, I want it to be over right there. This point right here, I want that to be shifted over right there. This part here goes through the middle, is now going to be right there. So it looks like we're shifting to the left again. So I'm going to say negative cosine of some shifted value is equal to positive sine. And the same thing here, I'll put x. I'm shifting to the left, so is that positive or negative? Positive. Pi over 2. So pretty much exactly what we saw up there. Then, once again, for no apparent reason, I'm going to plug in negative x values. Because at some point in history, some math nerd thought that up and that made everything look really cool. So cosine negative x plus pi over 2 equals sine of negative x. Then, just like before, instead of using even property, I'm going to say the odd property of sine. We note that the sine of negative x is equal to negative the sine of x. Left hand side, just leave it as is. Negative cosine, negative x plus pi over 2. And then I'll multiply this side by negative 1 and multiply this side by negative 1 so that that negative cancels out there and the negative cancels out there. And I have cosine. I'm also going to rearrange this so that it looks really awesome. Pi over 2 minus x equals sine x. Rosa, look at the similarities there between this one and this one. What do you see? Uh, it's the same, but it's just 
Yeah. It's kind of counterintuitive because you might think that like if sine is pi over two minus x equals cosine, you might think that cosine of pi over two plus x or something like that, you know what I mean? But it's cool that it works this way based on the even and odd property. In fact, the uh, if you look at the trig chart, all of them follow that pattern. And it's always with the cos, right? So like tangent pi over two minus x is equal to cotangent of x. Secant is matched with cosecant, okay? And it's always blah pi over two minus x equals coblah. Or coblah pi over two minus x equals blah. All right, yeah, that's great. As a side note, who can tell me what does pi over two equal in degrees? 90 degrees. All right. So that, that is actually all six co-function identities. I should just call it today's identity day or something like that. Because I think everything else are formulas. Yeah, so we're done with the identities. And everything else is formulas. So now we can apply our knowledge solve some problems. because number two is a better number better one. one. It is. I don't know how that happened, but it just happened. So this says use a co-function to write an expression equal to sine 57. All right. Well, I like the degrees because I'm comfortable with degrees. I'm familiar with, you know, 57, you know, the numbers and stuff like that. Uh, that scares me. Fractions mm -hmm. yep. kind of get me off balance. Then you put pies in there and I'm totally upside Terrified. down. Yeah, so um, I'm going to write the formula here. Sine of pi over 2 minus x equals cosine x. But this isn't in radians. It's in degrees. So let's write that sucker in degrees. Sine of 90 minus x equals can make a different it sounds you know? like it's conflicting oh. yeah. Yeah. is that jazz? is that jazz? <laughs> uh, so a bunch of random sounds that don't really go together but people act like it's a song well, if that's what you call jazz then yep that's jazz, <laughs> that's jazz. <laughs> just kidding jazz is its own genre that's legitimate <laughs> apparently <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I like that. Um, all right. So here we go. So instead of saying the sine of 57 degrees, can I get this thing off? No, all right. So sine of. 90 minus 57. I think I, I think I did this one. I think I'm setting this one up wrong. I am. I'm, I'm writing sine of all this stuff. I, I should have. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm setting this up from the wrong way. I see. I need to write the other function. Is what we'll do because I'm saying. Uh, so. Sorry about that. Yeah, I need to say. The cosine. Yeah. I need to say. Sine of 57 is going to equal cosine of 90 minus 57. Sorry about that. So. Sine of 57 equals cosine. I need your calculator to do the math. 90 minus 57, folks. Uh, 33. 33. There we go. That's 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 literally all you have to do to apply it. So we're saying the sine of blah is cosine of 
90 minus log. Yeah. yeah, I had it switched around for whatever reason. So I didn't no, know. <coughs> yeah, it, I was acting like it was on the side, we should have started oh, yes. with that. Okay, uh, let's do, uh, sure, boys versus girls. Guys, sign of 57, gals, cosine 33. Make sure your calculator is in degree mode. Guys, what do you get? Call it out to me. Full decimal precision there. Zero point. Or sign of 57. Type, call it out there, Nick. Eight. The whole thing? Yep. Eight, three, eight, six, seven, zero, five, six, seven, eight. Ladies, when you type in cosine 33, enter, do you get that exact same thing? All right. Okay, good. So we're all in agreement. Sine of 57 is cosine 33. Hooray, that's the answer. The answer is cosine 33. Turn over the paper if you want to check. Let's go down here to number four. Use a co-function expression, or use a co-function to write an expression equal to tangent of 18. I'm not going to mess this one up here. Well, so tangent of theta is equal to cotangent of 90 minus theta. There we go. So tangent of 18 would be cotangent of 90 minus 18. And so then all we have to really figure out is, <laughs> what is 90 minus 18, class? Cotangent? 72 degrees. Answer. All right. Everybody good on this? I think we can handle this. This is summer. Oh, no. We've got to deal with the, the last one here. Number five. Oh, no. Uh, right? Uh, use a co-function to write expression equal to cosine 5, 5, 11. Okay, that's no big deal. I can handle this. Cosine 5, 5, 11 is equal to, see if you want to help me out, the sine of pi over 2. Keep going, John. Minus. Minus. Right. Right, which is 5, 5, 11. Oh, no, I hate this. I hate fractions of... Who cares? Just factor out the pi. So sine of pi times one half minus five over eleven. Does that make sense? Factor out the pi. Factor out the pi. I can type this into the calculator. <laughs> Smiley. I guess it's done. The melody was resolved. All right. So, over. All right, so 1 half minus 5 11. <coughs> Type that in the calculator. Then do your fraction, enter, enter. Okay. 25 seconds. 1 over 22. 1 over 22. So we have sine of pi times 1 over 22. See what I'm saying? Just ignore the pi. Factor it out. Do the fraction math. Okay? So would it be pi over 22? That would be sine of pi over 22. No big deal. Wow. Today we talked about reciprocal identities, the Pythagorean identities, and the co-function. And one foggy Christmas Eve, Seven pages.